restoration work on the, the canal site at Darnford Lane began in 1995. Over the next few years, contractors excavated the canal channel. A culvert was installed for Darnford Brook by volunteers. The lift bridge was installed, and 400 meters of the canal channel was lined with sponsored steel sheet piling. Over the last few weeks there has been a flurry of activity in the section to the east of Darnford Lane up to, and a little beyond, the lift bridge. So, why is work restarting now after 20 years or so? We can only do, at any particular time, what we have the money to do. There is good news for habitat improvements on this disused canal section, which will become the Darnford Moors Ecology Park. Funding has been secured for £121,000. The European Regional Development Fund is providing 40% of the grant, with match funding of 60% from the HS2 Community and Environment Fund. This will enable LHCRT to make improvements to the Darnford Brook wetlands, hedgerows and existing woodland, in Phase 1 of the project, from Darnford Lift Bridge to the end of the existing piling. These grants are fantastically good news for the Trust. We'll be using it to create a wonderful ecology park here in Litchfield as part of our commitment to habitat improvements, biodiversity and carbon capture, whilst also putting another section of the canal into water. There are tight timescales to complete specific environmental criteria by February 2023. So let's take a look at what the volunteers have been doing to prepare for the specialist contractors. So welcome to Darnford Moor. You join us in the second week of what is a bit of a muck shift. Um, unfortunately, all the good quality soil is up at that end um, because the canal didn't used to run this way. It used to divert behind me uh, and go through Lock 29. Of course, it's a similar situation to Lock 24. Unbacked bridges aren't allowed anymore, and so what we've got to do is bring the canal through at the low level and get under the road uh, that's, that's ahead of me. So piling, it was just full of bramble. Bramble had just completely taken over, and so the, we, we couldn't get through, nothing could get through, and so this is also about improving habitat. So um, we need to clear off some of the bramble. There's a nature trail going to be built behind me which is where lock 29 used to go we're diverting the canal this way now so mm. in the woods to uh, my left and behind me is uh, where we're building a nature trail but it's again it's very early it's very early days for that as well
Okay, do. steel sheet piles which were installed many years ago uh, by by our volunteers uh, needs needs a, a, a fair bit of remedial works they didn't quite finish the installation so this involves putting additional tie rods in because they didn't put enough they put they put enough to get it vertical but they, it's not uh, it, oh, right. it's not completed so we're putting additional tie rods in additional anchors to put in and we're going to be backfilling which was never but never completed so we'll complete the backfill and uh, we'll get the towpath along here which allows us to move forward to some of the ecological work such as dealing with that hedge either laying it or at least cutting it back planting additional trees and the like over on the other side we've got the the duke of edinburgh students here they're here for their normal saturday morning stint i think there's about a dozen or so uh, students are in this morning and we're, we're carving back the undergrowth. As you can see, if you leave the, uh, the canal for any length of time, it's covered in, in thistles, brambles, thorns, and, and very tall, tall uh, vegetation. We need to clear all of that so we can actually see what we're, what we're at. We need to do um, earthworks. And of course, ultimately, in this section, we've got to put a new lining in here. We've just heard that we've got two grants, uh, one from ERDF, um, which is being managed by Solihull uh, Metropolitan District Council and also uh, HS2, amounting to just over £100,000 and that allows us to, to move forward this section up to the, up to the lift bridge. Uh, a fabulous thing, we will hopefully um, early next year, spring next year, we should have this section of canal in water and uh, that will really be a, a massive move forward. 200 metres away, we've got HS2 starting to, to work, they're, they're finalising the design on the, on the diversion and uh, hopefully that, that section will be done in the next, uh, I, they, they've said at the moment it's, it's going to be completed by 2025. Um, we're optimistic, we'll be finished early spring next year with this and um, we're, we're working on another bid to get another piece of grant to move the other side of the lift bridge and move right the way up towards uh, towards Darnford Lane. Very, very exciting times, a massive amount of work we've got. We're going to be employing contractors to, to do some of the lining works here um, and we're doing, we're doing a great deal of work ourselves and, and an enormous amount of ecological work, including work in the woodlands and work on the marshland floodplain down there. This, this is something we've done some tests on. Uh, we've we've actually tried tried uh, a test. We've left it under pressure, so uh, the, the soil putting pressure on the back of the tape on the outside of the tape will hold the tape where it needs to be. Uh, water will water pressure from the other side. We've done some tests on it. It's it's a long-lasting rubberized tape, very very high tack. Um, it's extremely high tack. Uh, we put a piece on there, and we can't even get it off the face. So it's that it's that good but very expensive, very expensive. Just, just on 12 pounds a roll. So it's, it's six pounds per length you're putting on there. You make sure that the pile is dry, they wipe it dry, clean, so it, it, it sticks to, to the galvanized metal. Yes, I've tried buying that locally. Somebody was quoting 18 pounds a roll. With the short and long, short and long. But you know, I, I've only, I can only find five this morning. So there's a few bits and pieces to do. Out the 
way as well. Yeah. Yeah, welcome. <laughs> good, good, good. One down. Yeah. That one num That's a 32 mil. That's a 30 mil sorry. Yeah, that'll do. Which one's that one? 32? The last second one you can have Corporate volunteering days have always been a significant help to the Trust. After an enforced break due to Covid, we are pleased to welcome back teams from several different companies. Here we are joined by a group from Amy Consulting, who are helping to clear scrub from the south side path. Yes, we own this land up to the edge of the, um, the golf course over there. And what we're trying to do here is clear a path through so we can get plant and equipment up here for two reasons. One is we've got contractors coming in further up uh, probably early in the new year and also we're, um, we can get planting along a route which is not underneath the power cable so it will be safer. Yeah, yeah. So, we've, so Amy's are clearing the, uh, the, the stuff out of the way for us so we can get in and make it into a, into a decent path. Oh, that's good, yeah. So uh, I'm Ed Gardner, um, I'm from Amy Consulting. This was what we've selected uh, as our social impact day for uh, 2022. Um, I run a team of about 20 people based in Birmingham. We are uh, railway designers, designing things from uh, anything from bridges to station platforms to um, under track crossings. Very different to what you normally do. Uh, very different. We, know, we have, since the COVID, been working from home so we very very rarely do anything actually together particularly on site together and are the guys enjoying it uh, very much so yes very much so and it's great to see it moving forward yeah. and great to be part of actually um, being part of that thank you very much thank you. Yeah, these guys are from uh, Plastic Omnium. Uh, they make uh, car bumpers for uh, JLR primarily, and they're here basically to put a fence up between us and the uh, and the golf course, just to define where we're going. And then afterwards, we'll then plant a hedge along here and uh, and green it all up.
We had a good day yesterday. We did the, uh, the se section down there, the other side of the lift bridge, and they made a great job with that as well. They did a cracking job. Yeah, so we're from Plastic Omnium. Uh, we work in Tamworth. Um, it's a French company. And we design bumpers and tailgates made of plastic for a huge range of car manufacturers throughout the world. Um, main customer is Jaguar Land Rover at the moment, who I know work with you as well. Yes, I've done yeah. It's a nice change from being in the office, sitting at a desk all day. Are, are you enjoying it? Yes, it's great fun. Yeah. So yeah, we're here today. We had a group here yesterday. We've had about 20 people overall. Um, yeah, it's been good. This steel sheet piling was installed over 20 years ago and needs some remedial work before contractors can begin installing the canal bed lining. Soil is removed from behind the piling, then the joints are sealed to make sure that they are completely waterproof. This calls for some highly skilled precision digger driving. Adrian Sturgis is at the controls, finally directed by Mike Babb. A recently joined volunteer, Dave Gittings, digs out the last bits of soil by hand. We're here with our usual Saturday morning uh, volunteers, most of whom are Duke of Edinburgh volunteers. Uh, we've got quite a few adults here who are regular members of the uh, Grounds and Green team. And we are planting, uh, hopefully, 420 saplings that we've had uh, from the Woodland Trust and had for free because they know that we have suitable sites to uh, and we look after them and we deal so much with young people and we're tremendously keen on biodiversity and re replacing all the lost hedges so we're hedge we're planting them to create a hedge along this fence line which is the border between the golf course and our land uh, and the canal channel obviously so the more we can put in trees, hedges, obviously the better for wildlife and biodiversity. We're very grateful to the Woodland Trust. We are, I think, on something like uh, over 6,000 saplings that we've had from the Woodland Trust over the years. And we have planted on all of our sites to create hedges, either new ones or to replace ones that have been lost. And our success rate, given that we don't re easily have access to water, in, in making sure that they survive, is extremely good. Uh, so, all good stuff. Thank you, Woodland Trust. Very good. Thank you, Christy. <coughs> Yeah, 
Well, here we are at uh, Darnford Moors, near, near the lift bridge in phase one of the Darnford Moors Ecology Park project. Phase one stretches from the end of the pile, piling uh, and the limit of, of our works here to the lift bridge. It's about 120 metres long and uh, th that phase one is covered by the, the two grant givers um, and uh, that money is now secure. We have yet to place orders with contractors, but there's, there's a lot of work, preliminary works, preparatory works is already going along in terms of the fencing and the, the pile remedials ready for the soil movement, which will in fact cut the profile, which will allow the contractor to put the lining. We've done, as you see, there's a lot of work being done on the, on the steel sheet piles. There's some remedial works we need to do there, put additional anchors in to support the, the piling and we're sealing the backs of the piles. There's name tags all the way along there uh, from, for all those that in fact sponsors it, rather like our current mm. piling appeal. And that's been very successful. And this was the last time they put them in and uh, so we're backfilling behind and once that's backfilled behind we will clean the channel out to the profile, the final profile necessary for um, lining it. Um, we will be doing over, over the next few weeks a little bit more excavation ahead of the, um, the lining contractor who will come in and place the, the new lining that is necessary to make this, this section of canal watertight. The idea is basically is to have this section uh, in water uh, early next year. This fencing was all installed uh, last week by a, a, a team of corporate volunteers that came down to, to spend two days with us. The, the hedge, hedge laying today is, is the completion of that process. Um, what we will do is then some earthworks this side um, within, our, within our land take. So Peter, what happens beyond the end of this piling? Uh, beyond the end of this piling here is, is, is a piece of land that we own. We've leased that to the, the property owner uh, by the lock. Um, that's leased there on, on an agreement that the restoration work won't be done until a certain criteria are met and we, will be, uh, we'll be, we hopefully will be meeting that criteria over, over the next year or so to, uh, to move forward. But basically this will be in water up to this point uh, but the, the section in, ahead of us will be uh, restored as soon as we get access to it. We have just the other side of that section. We're, we're only talking of a, uh, probably 120, 200, 120, 150 metres. There's, of course, we're below lock 30 and below lock 30 HS2 are actually putting in the diversion for the canal because they're taking out the section of canal. The railway viaduct where it comes down, the abutment actually sits right in the bed of the canal um, as it is today and uh, so they will be taking that and they are, have agreed that they will put a diversion in for us as part of their works. Deadline for that is to have that all completed by 2025 at the moment, that's their, their current estimate. We're going to have this hopefully next year. So we're saying 2023, the section in between is hopefully will be moved move forward. So all of this will be a section of live canal. And you're hoping to get water in this as soon as this has got the lining in it? Yes, it is intended that this section will, will, have, will be put into water immediately. We'll put a dam across the end here. We'll put stock planks at the bridge and we will, using an abstraction license that we have, to fill the canal, we will fill the, this section of canal and have this in water. That wa the water for this section will come from Darnford Brook. It would be pumped from Darnford Brook into effectively this, this is going to be like a reservoir um, and it will have an overflow to take any surplus water back into, into the brook. Heavy rain in late November shows how the canal and Darnford Brook will work together to help control flooding. It also gives an idea how the canal will look one day when fully in water. So we're, we're standing on the top of the siphon here. Which, this is the siphon that was put in. It's, it's a very old siphon that has been here for me, nearly since the start of the canal, uh, several hundred years. So this is the, an, a new siphon that was put back about 20, 20, 25 years ago. That was it reinstalled. The brook which passes under the canal and the abstraction point is right there. Uh, the head wall for the abstraction point is completely submerged. So um, uh, flooding that we, ha we have to deal with, um, it's, it's normal, this, this brook does flood, 
and, and it overflows into the, into the flood plain down there and of course the flood plain over here as well. I want to thank our dedicated and hard-working volunteers who spent so much time working on these successful bids and preparing the site ready for the contractors to start. With more funding, we hope to expand as far as Darnford Lane. That will be a length of about half a mile and we're waiting for news of another bid for funding that we've submitted, so everything crossed. Yeah.